Hello everybody and welcome back to another Blender Made Easy tutorial. Today we're going to be creating carpet in Blender. We're going to be modeling this cube into a rug and then adding a, a particle system and changing the particle system to look like carpet. Let's first start out with this cube by scaling it down. So you can press the S key, then Z, and scale it down until it's about the size of the carpet. So scale it down along the Z, probably around that thickness will be fine. Next, you can scale it along the X because normally rugs aren't square, they're usually rectangle. So you can press S, X, and scale it along the X till it's about the size that you want. Next, go into edit mode and we're going to subdivide this a couple times because I want to add some more geometry to it. But if we subdivide this by clicking W and subdivide, if we do this a couple times, you'll notice that, the, that there's a lot of vertices getting added right here. And this is just extra geometry that we don't need. So I'm going to control Z that a couple times until it's back to normal. And I'm going to manually subdivide this. So I'm going to hit control R and add in a bunch of loop cuts, probably around, let's say like 35 loop cuts. Then I'm going to left click, then right click. Next, I'm going to come over here, control R and add in some loop cuts on this side probably around 25, let's go, yeah, 25 is good. Left click, then right click. Perfect. Next, go over to the modifier section, click add modifier and a subdivision surface. This will smooth out the edges as you can see right there. Let's bring up the view to two, both the render and the view to two. Next, go into edit mode and then go into face select mode down here. Holding the alt or the option key, you can right click on that corner and it will select the entire loop. I'm going to drag this down just a little bit to give it sort of this shape. So if we look underneath, you can see it looks like that. There we go. We can also give this some displacement by going to the modifier section, clicking on displacement right here. Hit control A and apply the scale so it knows the exact dimensions and it will, it might look like this and we're going to fix that. Click new on the texture on the displacement, then go over to the texture panel. This is where you can set how the displacement affects the mesh. Here I like to use clouds because that's just normally really good and here we can see the results. We first need to bring the strength way down because it's crazy right now. Let's go with like 0 0.02. That still might be a little too much. Let's go 0 0.01 and then we'll bring up the size over in the texture panel. So this is currently what the displacement looks like. If I bring the size up, the bumps will become a lot bigger. If I bring them down, the bumps will become a lot smaller and you can see the result right here. So probably, let's go with something like that. I think it'll be fine, so 0.5. And the depth, does the depth do anything? Yeah, it just makes it more contrasty. We can leave it at three, that's fine. All right, so now let's create a vertex group so our particles will go in the position that we want because we don't need any underneath or like on the sides or anything, just on top. So to do this, go into edit mode and we're going to select the top right here. So go into top view by pressing 7, and then A to deselect everything, C for circle select, and you can just click around the top just like that, and it won't select the bottom, only the top. Perfect. Next, go over to the vertex group, make sure you're still in edit mode, hit the plus sign on the vertex group, and assign. Let's actually go into weight paint mode so you guys can see what it looks like. So here is our weight paint, where the red will be, that is where all the particles are going to be and where the blue that means there's no particles at all. Let's go out of object mode and now let's create the particle system. So go over to the particle system and click new. Make sure the type is set to hair and not emitter. And this is what it looks like. It is pretty crazy right now so let's actually apply the vertex group that we just created. So to do this you can scroll down to the vertex group down here Underneath density select group and there we go. So you can see the particles are now on the top You can turn on advance right here and this will just give us some more options the hair length We're going to turn this way down. So probably let's go with about point point four. I think that'll be good. Maybe maybe a little bit less. Yeah, let's do point three next Scroll down to the physics settings and the Brownian. This is what I want to turn up because this will give the particles some crazy sort of like look as you can see right there. I think that might be perfectly fine. 
I think that's a little too much. Let's go with 0 0.01. And over here we can turn on B spline and bring the steps up to four. Basically the B spline will help the, the hair look a little bit more smooth and not so jagged. Next, scroll down to the hair cycle settings and let's zoom in here. And then I'll press Shift Z. This is what our hair looks like in the rendered view. For some reason it doesn't display it in the viewport, it only displays it in the render. So you make sure you need to go into rendered view to see what it looks like. All right, so the root right here, this is the thickness of each of these strands. So if I turn this down to let's say like 0.2, you'll notice that the hair becomes very thin. The scaling right here, this will just scale up your uh, hair as you can see right there. It's pretty crazy. Let's go a little bit higher though. Let's go with a value of 0 0.02 just to give it a little bit more thickness. Close tip right here will just make the tip of the, the hairs into a point. If I turn it off though, you won't really see a difference until I turn up the tip right here. So let's say if I bring this up to a value of 0.2, and now you can see it's a circle. If I turn this close tip on, it turns it into a point. I think leaving it off, I think will look good. We can leave it right there and then bring the tip. Let's go with a value of 0.15. So not too thick and not too small. There we go. All right, so, so let's zoom out here. And the number of particles, this uh, is kind of dependent on how fast your computer is. A lot of particles will really slow it down. It just depends. I think I'm gonna go with a value of 200,000. But before we do that, I want to make sure the display down here is lowered. Right now it's at 100%, so right now it's showing 1,000 particles. If I turn this down to, let's say, 10%, now it's only displaying 100 particles. So now let's scroll up here and set the number of particles to 200,000. There we go. So in the final render, it will display all of the particles, but right now it's only displaying uh, 20,000. We can also bring up the steps right here. This will also help smooth out the hair. So let's bring that up to a value of four. So now if we zoom in and press Shift Z, we can see what it looks like. There we go. You know what, I think it might be a little thick. So I'm gonna set the root to a value of 0.15. There we go, that's a little bit better. So now let's mess with the material. So go over to the material tab and click on use notes. We're gonna be doing two different materials. The first one is going to be the carpet material. So we're gonna name this one carpet. The second material, so let's hit that plus sign and new. This one is going to be the rug, so you can type in rug. Let's first focus on the carpet. So let's open up a new window, come down here and select node editor. Then press N to close it off. Okay, so for this material, we're going to delete this diffuse shader, so you can press the X key and delete it. Then press Shift A, we're going to add in the shader and then principled shader right here. Take the output and plug it into the surface of the material input. Next, we're gonna add a mix shader in between these two. So press Shift A, go to Shader, and then Mix Shader, and place that right here. Then press Shift A, go to Shader, and then Translucent down here. Take the output and plug it into the mix shader, then set the factor of the mix shader to a value of 0.1. So basically what this is doing is taking the translucent shader and it's helping light sort of pass through the carpet and you can kind of see it if we open up the preview and go into the particles right here if i turn up the mix shader you can see it starts to look kind of transparent and light is sort of going through it if i go all the way up you can see it and then all the way down it's like that so a value of 0.1 will just help light go through it just a little bit next press shift a we're going to add in a let's go input and then particle info right here actually no not particle info we're going to do hair info right here, hair info. Next, press Shift A, go to Converter and Color Ramp. Take the intercept value from the hair info and plug it into the color ramp right here. Then take the color and plug it into the base color of the principal shader. We also wanna take the intercept and plug it into the color of the translucent. And you can see what it looks like if it's like that and then plugged in, just a little bit of a difference. Now here is where we set the color, and as you can see in the preview, the black is at the bottom and then the white is at the top. So for the black value, we're gonna go right about here on this uh, length and change this to a brown color. So we'll darken that up and maybe go probably 
around here. Something like this, maybe a little darker. I think that will be good. Next, we're going to hit the plus sign and place one right here and set this to a lighter brown color. Let's go with this color. So if you want the exact color that I'm using, you can type in the hex code right here. Next, take the white value and place it right next to the, the brown value or the light brown value right there. So if we look at this photo right here, you can see kind of like strands of different color. So we're going to kind of fake that with this material. So let's go back to Blender and then do that right here. So hit the plus sign and we're going to move this this way just a little bit. Actually, hold on. That's the wrong one. This one. Yep, there it is. We'll drag it right here and we're going to select that same color. So you can click on this, click on this and grab the eyedropper tool and just select that same color. So right there. Next, click on this one and hit the plus sign and then drag it over to the right a little bit like that. And also, I think, uh, yeah, we need to bring this one back up to the white color. So select the eyedropper tool and select the white. So we need to do this just a couple more times. So hit the plus sign, drag it this way, click on this eyedropper tool, select the brown right here, then hit the plus sign, move it over to the right, click on this and select the white color right here. We'll do this one more time. So hit the plus sign and then move it over to the right. No, that's the wrong one. Nope, come on, let me select this one. There we go. And for this color, we're going to go with that brown color right here and then maybe make it just a little bit brighter and then a little more saturated, probably around there. Now, if you look over here, it doesn't really look like carpet and that's because we're going to do one more thing to this. We're going to press shift a go to color and then mix node right here place it in between the color ramp and the principal shader set this color to multiply and then for this we're going to select the color right here so select this color place it right there and you know what maybe make this a little bit more saturated there we go so this is what it's looking like and if we zoom in and press shift z we can see it right there so what this multiply node is doing is it's taking the overall color and then mixing it with this color right here. So if I go all the way up, it's going to look like that. If I go all the way down, it's going to have zero effect. So around, let's go up a little bit, probably around 0.7 will be good. And there you can see it looking like that. Not too bad. Okay. So we're done with this material and for the rug material, we're going to uh, do something a little bit different. First off, let's delete the diffuse shader, then press shift a go to shader and then principled shader right here. Take the output, plug it into the surface, then press shift a go to texture and then noise texture right here. Then press shift a go to converter and color ramp place that right here. Take the color and plug it into the factor, then take the color and plug it into the principled shader. So what this material is doing is it's creating variation in the rug. So some parts will be a little bit lighter. Some parts will be a little bit darker and it will look pretty good. So for the scale, we're going to turn this up to 200 like that. And we can leave the detail and everything as it is for the color. We're going to go with a brown color. So for the black, we'll select the color, drag it up a little bit and find a nice brown color, probably around there. Then select the white and we'll go with a lighter brown. So we can actually select that same brown right here and then just drag it up. So just click on this and just drag it up and maybe make it a little less saturated. Probably around there will be good. There we go. And basically that's all we really have to do. Actually the roughness, we're going to bring that up to a value of 0.8. All right, so let's close this off just like this. And yeah, so what it's doing is it's taking our carpet and actually applying it to the rug. So let's go into edit mode on this, press A once or twice to select everything and click assign on the rug right here. So now if we press shift Z, it will be the right color. There we go. And let's just make sure that the particle system is using the right material as well. So we'll come up here. Yes, it is under render. You can see it's carpet. Perfect. Okay, so now let's create a floor and then render it out. So press shift A, go to mesh and then plane. Then scale up the plane by pressing S 100 and enter. 
and it looks like it's above so we need to drag it down go into front view five for orthographic and just drag it underneath our rug we'll zoom in here drag it up a little bit there we go next for the lighting we'll go over to the world settings and just drag this up a little bit to give it a lighter color we'll press shift z see what it looks like not too bad and for this lighting right here we can select the lamp go over to the lamp settings use nodes and set the strength to let's say 300 then we'll brush shift z and see what it looks like not too bad all right so for our camera we're going to place it probably around here pretty close up so i'll position my viewport right here hit Control alt zero or command option zero and that will snap the camera to where i'm looking then what you can do is right click on it g middle mouse button and just drag it backwards place it right here maybe zoom in a little bit something like that we'll press shift to z and see what this looks like not too bad let's add some depth of field just to give the camera some visual interest so over here in the camera settings if you don't have it already selected i'm going to click right about here then press shift a and add in an empty plane axis then right click on the camera again underneath the depth of field let's select that empty to focus in on so click on this drop down menu and select empty then set the aperture to f stop and the number we're going to go with a value of two this will give us some really nice depth of field let's press shift z and see what it looks like there we go not too bad let's get out of that view and for the material for our plane this is going to be just a principled shader so go over to the material tab click on new and change this to principled right here all right so now that we've done that let's save our project by hitting Control s i'm just going to save it to my desktop and call it carpet there we go then go over to the render settings turn up the resolution to 100 percent you can also turn on denoising and click on render and there we go the render has finished and this is our result i think it looks really nice what you could do is maybe thicken up the rug just a little bit give it some more thickness but i'm going to leave that up to you guys and you can do what you want with it so that's going to be it for this tutorial thank you for watching if you learned something new please leave a like and comment and i'd love to see what you create from this tutorial so make sure to send me it on twitter or instagram that's going to be it thanks for watching and i'll see you guys in the next video